Hello, everyone. I'm Becca, dietitian by trade, mom 24-7, wife from the start, and when there's a few extra hours in the day, you might find me hitting the trails or on horseback. And I'm Kara, a therapist to women, a mom to a boy, an entrepreneur, mountain junkie, and a postpartum runner. And this is Fit for a Queen, a podcast that's devoted to the female athlete wanting to balance the teeter-totter of all the things we desire out of life as women. Performance, health, intellect, and taking time for self, even if we only get one minute out of the day. We're so excited to be bringing you the queens in the athletic world who have done just that. Okay, ladies, take a seat at your thrones, grab your crowns, and welcome to Fit for a Queen. All right. Welcome back, Queens. We are excited to have um, what we consider a local hero, hero, but now she's on the national spotlight, mm-hmm. Courtney Frerichs. Um, Courtney was born in, I'm going to say this probably wrong, Mundelein, Illinois. Is that right? Mundelein. Mundelein. <laughs> but moved to Nixon, Missouri, where she would live until moving away for college. Although she was exposed to track at an early age, she grew up actually competing in several sports while focusing on gymnastics and soccer. She would go on to discover her love for long-distance running her senior year of high school and went on to compete in cross-country and track and field for University of Missouri, Kansas City. Go Ruse! Mm-hmm. After a successful undergraduate career at UMKC, where she had five All-American finishes, and in her Bachelor of Arts in Chemistry, Courtney decided to follow her college coach, James Butler, to the University of New Mexico to compete for the Lobos and attended graduate school. She would go on to lead the Lobos to a national championship in cross country, win an individual NCAA title in the steeplechase, and set the NCAA record in the steeplechase. Shortly after completing her NCAA eligibility, she signed a contract with Nike and the Bowerman Track Club. In July of 2016, Courtney fulfilled her childhood dream of becoming an Olympian after finishing second in the 2016 U.S. Olympic trials in the steeplechase. She now trains at the Nike World Headquarters in Beaverton, Oregon, and is coached by Jerry Schumacher and Pascal Dober. She most recently won the silver medal at the 2017 World Championships, becoming the seventh fastest woman in history of the event. Emma Coburn won the gold in that event, making Emma and Courtney the first Americans to win the gold and silver in the steeplechase at a global championship. Congratulations, Courtney, <laughs> and welcome. Thank you. Yeah. I would t- like to talk a little bit about the race. I saw that event. What a crazy race it was for a number of reasons. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. That outcome going one and two was not what was expected of the event. So tell us a little bit about that strategy um, going in. And what was, if you can even remember, what was going through your head as you were <laughs> going around that track that day? Um, yeah, going into that race, um, you know, this was my first full year as a professional athlete. And so we knew I was in a much, be- in much better shape and in a much better position to do well at the world championships than, um, I had done in the previous year in Rio at the Olympics. And so, um, I was really excited going to that race to kind of showcase all the hard work I'd been putting in. And, uh, my, my coaches had told me to really key off Emma that day. She's been around the international scene for a long time now and has had a lot of success and we just knew she was going to run really smart and it was going to be much more comfortable if I was you know focusing on um you know trying to be with her than you know maybe some of the Kenyans or the Ethiopians who Mm -hmm. it can be intimidating going up against them I mean they're so talented yeah so um the strategy was just to kind of keep close as close to Emma as I possibly could and um really just give myself a chance um to do something, we didn't know what that something could be, you know, whether it was just a fast time, it was top 10, top five, um, just to give myself a chance to have um, an opportunity to do well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then throughout the race, I remember, like, I remember the girl, I remember Beatrice um, missing the water jump uh-huh. and being like, oh my what gosh, is what is going, going on, on in the <laughs> world championship race? But and then- my coaches have been on the international scene for a really long time. And the thing with specifically world championship finals or Olympic finals is it's not a time trial. And, you know, there's a lot more pressure that goes into these events. And so as Jerry had said, like weird things happen. Mm -hmm. Um, And so whenever that happened, I was just like, well, 
I guess this is what he was referring to <laughs> about weird. So I kind of just was like, okay, well, that happened. Um, and then she fell, mm -hmm. um, what, 250 meters later. And um, I was just in my head. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm so glad I listened to him because he was – one of his specific instructions was I needed to get off the line really hard and to be in that front pack right away. And I was – normally, I probably would have been more on that back end. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so glad I listened to him because I probably would have gotten caught up in the fall. Yeah, in that mess that was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 800 meters in, like, so many things he had said, like, going into this race were already happening. I was like, I've got to stay on this plan. He's – I just knew they've – you know, Pascal had competed in the Olympics and had been in a lot of these races. So his, you know, advice and trust er, – my trust in him is huge. And Jerry's just seen so many. So I was like, I need to just keep trusting in this plan. And – um you know, we were getting to about a mile in or so, and I kind of started to yo-yo a little bit, like mm -hmm. would sl slowly fall off and then catch back up. And it was one of those things where, you know, you're in the middle of the race and um, that's whenever fatigue starts to set in. And I was really able to break the race down and, you know, focus on, okay, let's just get through this next 600 meters. Let's get to this mark. And then I'll be able to shift to like focus. So it wasn't like, oh my gosh, I have three and a half laps still and I'm already tired. It was, okay, I need to get to 600 meters and then we'll shift to the next spot. And then with 400 to go, um, Jerry had told me, you know, if you put yourself in this, he's like, you might sniff something special. <laughs> and with 400 to go, I was like, this is the special. I was like, oh my gosh, like Aww. I'm in fifth right now, but I don't want fifth. I mm -hmm. want a medal. And so... It was just really, I feel really lucky to have like, to have coaches that have so much experience and were able to kind of um, really prep me for that experience. And then teammates and everything, you know, I was so inspired by my other teammates who had done so well. And it was, I have a awesome support group that helped me get to that point. Oh, yeah. You know, what's so funny is I was thinking about this as we were getting ready and how full circle. So two years ago, Kara and I and Brooke Gouye, your teammate, were at a, a conference and she was adamant. She rode with mm -hmm. me that we had to hurry and get back because it was going to be your Olympic time trials. So we wrap up at the, the conference, get in and like get home. And then we're like texting back and forth. And then you, you had obviously made the Olympic team, but it's just so funny now, like seeing how far you've come in your career. And it's just pretty awesome is the only way to put it. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And just thinking like in the moment, what your brain and body can do, because I mean, your times was a, uh, an amazing PR time as well that you haven't ran that fast before. Yeah, it was definitely, um, you know, I think the body is physically capable of so much more than we realize mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's up here, it's in the head. And that was something I definitely realized in that Olympic trials race. Um, and in, in the world's race that whenever I kind of got over those mental barriers, I was able to physically do so much more than I realized. Mm -hmm. Such a good point. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> so your background in sport really models balance with having been a gymnast and runner and participating in other sports. How do you think that that shaped you mentally and physically as an athlete? I think, um, you know, my multi-sport background is huge and not only my success in running, but just in, I think, the person I am. Um, Specifically, you know, gymnastics, I think it, it teaches you um, a lot of the ability to focus um, and time management. And, you know, it's a very demanding sport. And specifically for athletics, you know, you have a really strong muscle development, and flexibility, agility and things like that. But then also, I think my parents were adamant in me trying so many different things, which I'm so thankful for because I had just such a balanced background going into my collegiate years where then I was ready to focus on another sport or one sport, but I had a lot of strengths and, um, things to pull from that were from my childhood. Um, and, you know, specifically with steeplechase, the gymnastics and soccer background, um, I have a lot, I have really good lower leg strength for gymnastics that plays really well into the steeple, um, the flexibility aspect. And then, um, I think just, 
yeah, the focus on me doing different sports, I was able to develop, um, you know, well-balanced muscle and, um, I don't know. I think I just became a really overall healthy athlete. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We're talking a little bit about that. There's so much pressure for kids to just focus on one sport at such a young age. And mm-hmm. really the benefit is being in different sports and a well-rounded for your, for your body. And Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm such an advocate for that. I actually, I speak, I go back to my hometown and speak about that all the time. And they're fin- my hometown's phenomenal about promoting, <laughs> um, multi-sport athletes. I had really awesome high school coaches that allowed me to play soccer and run track at the same time Mm. and do competitive gymnastics. And, you know, that's not really the case in a lot of places anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, they want you to decide by age 10. And, um, you know, if you would have asked me at age 10, what I was going to do, I would, I was going to be an Olympic gymnast. And, Hmm. um, you know, by age 13, I'd grow outgrown the, the body for an elite level gymnast. And, and that's okay. I still love gymnastics and it has helped me tremendous, tremendously in my um, athletic career. But my, my, uh, the ability and my parents allowing me to try so many different sports. I mean, I played volleyball and basketball and um, softball, everything just allowed me to figure out what I wanted to do. And also, I mean, we discovered my running talent probably when I was about seven. Mm hmm. But I didn't focus on run. I didn't focus on running until I was eighteen, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and I think that I was ready at that point to to be able to put all that focus in, and you know, and not just sports. I mean, I was in the band, I did art, and I did choir, and um, so I think it's just so important to allow kids to be kids and um, pick the things they want to do because when you're allowing them to have a say or um, a choice in the matter, they're going to be a lot more passionate about it. Yeah. Great Absolutely. point. Great. Well, you got the Olympic part right. You just didn't have the right sport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of your hometown, what was life like growing growing from small town Nixa to spotlight on ESPN? That's kind of a, a big jump. Um, yeah. It's been a lot different um, just because, you know, growing up in Nixa, I was recognized. But just like any other kid is, um, any kid that does anything amazing is – you feel that hometown support and, um, you know, after the medal, it was, I was anywhere in the stadium and people were coming up to me and, um, you know, there were all these interviews and definitely got a little overwhelming, but being able to go home shortly after, um, all that happened was really nice because I was reminded of these people support me and like me for me being Courtney and not this, steeplechase soup, you know, star mm-hmm. it's to them. I'm still Courtney and I really, really love that. And so, um, it was, it's been really fun to be a, a part of history and, um, to see our sport get more recognition through the performance. And I've loved that part of it, but I also love getting to go home and still be Courtney to them. Yeah, I bet <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. It's been um, said that sport can really become a common denominator among all people can you share how you and Emma have been able to lift each other up and work together when it just seems like these days women really just like to tear each other apart? Absolutely. Um, I 100% believe what Emma and I were able to accomplish was because we worked together um, versus working against each other. Of course, we both want to win. <laughs> Every, we're all competitive people, mm-hmm. but we know we are truly better together. And I feel the same way about my teammate, Colleen Quigley, who was not in the race. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, her and I, anytime we go to step on the line, of course we want to win the race, but in practice, we're out there working together for the, you know, the overall um, benefit of, um, for the better, you know, the higher, the better, I'm trying, I'm at a loss for words right now. Um, (laughs) Of the team. Oh, yeah. The yes, better exactly. Of the team. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and, you know, that's something that, you know, in speaking with Emma outside, like off the track, it's she gets just as excited for our performance as Colleen and I, and we're on a different track club than her as she does for herself. And I feel the exact same way because the only way we're going to make progress in sport or, um, you know, as women is truly lifting each other up. Mm-hmm. And, um, in the steeplechase in particular, I feel like we have that. And so it's been really neat. And 
I absolutely think that the one, two finish was accomplished because we were a greater power than out there than just ourselves. Yeah. And and there was no mistaking this, the embrace and the smile between the two of you was pure Mm -hmm. love and bliss for both teammates. It was so excited for you. It looked like it was one of those. I like broke out in a smile, like before the finish line, even because I was like, Oh my gosh, (laughs) Emma is winning. And then I was like, Wait, I need to win silver, not bronze. <laughs> I got second. Wait so, a minute, I'm behind yeah. her. <laughs> yeah, it was, just, it was it was amazing, and that's, um, you know, my team specifically here in in Beaverton in Portland. Um, it's really neat. We're a group of oh gosh, I think we've grown to ten women now, which is kind of unheard of in the professional running world. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard to find really large groups training together because when you are a professional runners especially you know it, it's your own individual career how mm-hmm. I perform doesn't at the end of the day really affect my teammates or others in the sport because my contract is my contract and my sponsors are my sponsors and things like that but in our group we're so invested in each other and we get just as excited for each other because we know that we're all working together for the for these goals and you feel just as accomplished whenever you feel like you played a small role in it and to see other people find that success too. And I d- kind of discovered that, that team element what, from cross country throughout college and loved that and um, really wanted that in a professional group. And I've definitely found that here. And I think it's been huge in my growth this year as an athlete. Yeah. And I think that's trickling down in the sport from, like you said, professionally, but just our little amateurs here that more running groups or running for causes or running together. Um, exactly. It's such an individual sport. We've really realized it's fun to do it together. So It's just so much more enjoy. I mean, especially running is hard, like no matter yeah. what level you're at. It's hard work, but it's so enjoyable whenever you're the, – the beautiful thing about running specifically is no matter what level you're at, everyone understands what you're going through on those long runs or any sort of run in a race. And so – there is a common thing you can um, relate to. And so it's more fun when you're with a group because you're all going through it together than it is when you're out there alone. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Courtney, we ask every interviewee how they themselves live the fit philosophy. And I'm really curious about how you've been trying to find balance with um, your elite status. So how do you, well, we know how you work on performance. That's a, <laughs> a, a thing you're dealing with every day. But how do you focus on um, your health and intellect and really taking time for yourself and finding that balance when you are competing at this level? Yeah, I mean, that's something I've really definitely had to learn a lot this year before I think it was easy to find balance because I had school. Mm -hmm. And so it was, you know, if, if I was struggling running a little bit, then I was able to put a little bit more focus in school and it was able to find that balance. But this year, um, you know, having graduated and, and being out of school and it shifting towards being a professional athlete, I've been definitely searching for that balance. Um, but I've really focused on developing really strong relationships with my teammates and, Um, I think those have really helped me to enjoy the whole process of um, being a professional athlete and the buildup and all that. And then, you know, focused on every little moment I get with my family and um, also, yeah, just, gosh, finding balance. And, you know, I've enjoyed cooking and things like that and um, just finding different elements that I feel like I can learn more to help my running but that are also going to be enjoyable Mm -hmm. yeah but it's the biggest part has been um, sharing it with others that's helped I think me find the most balance is remembering that I'm not on like this journey alone but I have this group around me that cares about me and loves me and wants just to see me be happy and um sharing that all with them and, and have, and reciprocating that and do, hopefully helping them in that way too has helped a lot. Well, it sounds like you found a, a good, good place out there in Oregon. With you a found good your tribe. Mm-hmm. Finding <laughs> the tribe. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, we'll be sure in the show notes, we're going to try to find some of those clips of the race so that Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at some last night. Viewers can or listeners can look at that as well as we'll put your website on there. Anything else that you'd like on the show notes? On the pardon? On our show notes, anything else you'd like included? Oh, not that I can think of. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thanks for coming on. And we can't wait to watch what happens with your career. We know this is only the best is yet to come for you. So. Good luck out there, Thank you, guys. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. This has been wonderful. Our pleasure. Well, thanks, Courtney. Bye. Bye. Thank you to our sponsor today, Sentimano Counseling. Sentimano Counseling is the premier perinatal mental health practice in Kansas City, treating mood disorders during pregnancy and postpartum, perinatal loss, infertility, eating, and exercise disorders. Go to sentimano.com for further information about the practice and services. For additional information on today's topic and guests, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Fit for a Queen. Hashtag Fit for a Queen. And don't forget to rate us on iTunes. We can't wait for you to join us next time on Fit for a Queen. Bye, queens.